Welcome in everybody, Parenting the Gap, episode number four. Today, I'm going to be talking about expectations. Happy whatever day it is to you right now. It's a happy Sunday for me. Um, Sunday tends to be the day that I allocate to waxing nostalgic. That's a phrase I've been using lately. I don't know why, but there it is. Okay, expectations. So a little background on uh, my idea of expectations. Um in my previous relationship with them. I was the queen of expectations. I loved them. They held my world together. And I thought, perceived, that helped other people keep their world together as well. I used them with everything. I would start my day with the expectation of how it was going to be and where it was going to go and what I was going to get done and how other people were going to interact with me. And the list goes on and on and on. My expectation, I set, I set my goal for the day, but it wasn't really a goal. It was an expectation, right? And there's a, there's a little, little bit of a difference. A goal is something that you hope to attain and you're working towards an expectation is a knowing of how it is going to be. There shall be no deviation from this expectation that I set. So let's make that that clear again, right? So a goal, like you, some people get up and they write their goals for the day and it's very light and, oh, I want to get this done and I want to get this done and I'll work towards making those things happen, right? So like if you set a goal of like, I want to get all my dishes clean, that's just something that you like work towards during the day. And at the end of the day, you can say, well, I didn't get them all cleaned, but I got half of them done and some of them put away. So, right, like that's progress. But an expectation is that they will get done, period, end of story. There shall be no deviation from that. It shall just be. They are done. Dish is done. Dish is put away. Anything outside of that expectation is absolutely not acceptable. And you better have a reason why you didn't meet that expectation. So let's talk about what the problem is with that, right? The problem with saying absolutely this must happen means there's no room for, I don't know, being a human. (laughs) And beyond that, It makes you feel like, makes me feel like I've done something wrong. Like I knew what the expectation was for myself. Why couldn't I do that? What happened to me? Rather than looking at what I did get done, it was all about what didn't. And that's not really a great feeling. So when we're setting these expectations in our lives. And I hear this word a lot. I hear it a lot. I hear it a lot when I'm talking to parents about their teens and they know the expectation. Parents, when they're talking about their young children, they know the expectation. I hear it in my own head when I'm thinking about my own children. They know what I expect. But when we set limits on other people, and not just on ourselves, it gives them that same icky feeling of, well, what's wrong with me? If they thought I could do it, why couldn't I? So instead of looking at what they did do, what they did get done, and seeing where they can do more the next day, seeing how they allocated their time more responsibly throughout the day, or how they could improve upon that. They're just looking for the, well, what's wrong with me? Why wasn't I able to do that? And when you have that mindset, the what's wrong with me, 
it's really hard to go into growth. It feels very sticky. There's not really a place for you to go from there. For the majority of people, there's some people that are like, okay, let's figure out what's wrong. and We're going to move past it. Those people are already in a growth mindset. But when you start out in the what is wrong with me, rather than look at what I can do, look at what I can learn, or asking what can I learn from this, then you get stuck in a very fixed mindset. And it makes it very difficult to start new things, try new things, break out of your own limiting expectations for what you should be doing in your own life. Not even based on what other people think about you. God, just disappointing people left and right. This was my relationship with expectations most of my life. Through no fault of anybody's it's just life, right? We, we grow and we learn and we, we change and we get better and we move forward. That's the hope at least. So hopefully you're listening to this and, and, and just hearing a little thing that says, Hmm, what, am, what is my relationship with my own expectations? And what can I do to make that better? So when I heard this pattern in my own life, expectations, expectations, they're my foundation for everything, foundation for getting everything done. And all the while I am full brimming over of rage and disappointment. And I don't just mean I'm a little angry. I mean, like I get angry folks, like popping blood vessels in my eyes, angry. Okay, let's lay that on the table. That's what my expectation of myself was that if I didn't do it, then it was the end of the world. Or if somebody else didn't do what I wanted them to do, well, what the F is wrong? Where did I go wrong? And it always, I always turned it back on myself eventually. I mean, the moment of the rage is you should have been doing blah, 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 right? You like, you hear that. You, what are you doing? That's the expectation. So I decided a couple of weeks ago, I don't really know the exact moment that I was going to break up with expectations. And, and y'all like, I mean, break up with them. Like this is a relationship right? And this is a lifelong relationship. And, and if you've ever ended a long-term relationship, you know, it's messy and sticky and doesn't feel good. And you're not sure if it's the right decision. And, and you keep going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So that's why I'm calling it a breakup, Break up with my expectations. I have to check myself every single day. I have to remind myself that the relationship that I was in with my expectations was toxic, aggressive, abusive, not good for me, not good for anybody around me. It wasn't healthy for my relationships with my own children. It wasn't healthy for my relationship with my husband. It wasn't healthy for my relationship with myself. It also wasn't healthy for my relationship with my clients because they snuck in there, those little expectations. And they're mostly about me. Like, what am I doing wrong that my client hasn't figured this out? What am I doing wrong that they haven't moved farther and faster? I broke up. I broke up with that. I said, get out of my house. You don't belong here anymore. You no longer serve me. You're not serving anyone around me. And all you're doing is making me angry all the time. Here's how that's been going. And I'm, I'm, I'm sharing the story with you so that if you're sitting there going, Oh fuck me too. I want to break up with my expectations. Well, y'all, this is how I'm doing it. And I'm not saying it's the only way. I'm just saying it's the only way that I know right now because 
I've never heard anybody say anything about breaking up with their expectations. Right? Like this is the first time I've ever heard of this. No one talks about these things. They just say, oh, I grew. Well, what does that mean? This is me growing. This is me moving into my growth mindset. Everyone talks about that. Have a growth mindset. We'll do another podcast on that. So the process that I went through, that I'm going through, that I will be going through probably for years and years and years, right? Lifelong relationship takes a long time to break those ties, those patterns. The first thing I do is I'm breathing more. And you might be thinking, what? Like meditating? Uh, No. That's not it, because I'm horrible at meditating. I'm not very good at sitting still and being quiet and listening to my own breath. What I do is when I'm doing something and I'm quote unquote interrupted, because the expectation is that when I start something, I'm going to finish it. And if anybody gets in the way of that, well, watch out, right? So when my amazing, smart, talented, opinionated four-year-old daughter walks up to me while I'm in the middle of doing whatever it is that I'm doing, brushing my teeth, brushing my hair, taking a shower, going to the bathroom, trying to put clothes on, trying to put food in my mouth. It It's endless, right? Whatever I'm trying to do, she's there talking to me, asking me questions, sharing stories with me. And previously, my reaction was, can't you just leave me alone? Can't you just let me finish this? Can't you see that my expectation is for you to just know that I don't want to be bothered right now? So instead of that reaction, I can feel the words creeping up. They're creeping. They're like, we're coming, we're coming. You have an expectation. And instead of letting those words out, I take a deep breath like this. I go, (sighs) and I just slow everything down. I feel my heart rate slow down. I feel my feet firmer against the ground. I feel like I'm sitting more in my body. And I'm, I even like blink slower, right? Like it's just a, <sighs> okay. And I look at my beautiful, talented, smart daughter. And I say, amazing. Or wow. Or tell me more about that. Or I need just another minute. Can you just wait a second? And this does a couple of things. A, my stress response, my HPA access, for those of you who know what that is, does not fire. It doesn't start. It doesn't even go off. And so my body is calmer. My mind is clearer. I have access to all of my faculties. And it feels good. Like, it feels light and easy and fresh. And my daughter is happy and not wounded and not being told that she's in the way or too much or a bother, right? These are the messages that we send when we say, why can't you just leave me alone? The message received is, oh, they don't want me here. It must be about me. So when I take the time to breathe, slow everything down, turn off my stress response, I make myself feel better. I make my daughter feel heard, even if I ask her to wait. And she says, okay, no problem. And then she toddles off. 
And I finish what I'm doing. And then I go back to her and I say, tell me about the story. And she'll be like, oh yes, there was this and that and this and that and this and that. And I listen intently, presently, without feeling like I'm going to also crawl out of my skin while I'm trying to hold it all together because my stress response has been triggered and my central nervous system is on fire because that's my own personal journey. Not everyone has this. Um, My therapist is quite enamored with this whole concept. It's the first time she's ever experienced it in her 30 years of working, which is awesome. That's also my story. Um, so this is, this is the process, right? And it's just a rinse and repeat. And then when I don't stop those words from sneaking out of my mouth, why can't you just, what is the problem? And I, you guys can't see me because obviously this is a podcast and I don't record myself for multiple reasons on video. My teeth are clenched and my face is angry and it feels hard and it feels rough. It doesn't feel good. Even just sitting here in my office, nothing's around me. I'm just saying these things for you. It doesn't feel good. My jaw hurts now, actually. I have a little bit of a headache starting, right? These are, there's physiological responses in your body when you behave in certain ways, both positive, negative, and neutral. So now when those words sneak out and I can feel it all being triggered and my skin starts to feel a little itchy and the blood just feels like it's getting hotter and my heart is beating faster, I go, (sighs) okay. And I try and just focus on something, anything, a spot on the wall, my daughter's face, the way it feels to fill my lungs with air. And that focus focuses my brain, focuses the neurological processes that are being fired and says, okay, it's time to focus on something else. And instead of continuing the cycle of stress, cortisol, stress, cortisol, stress, which keeps your heart pumping faster and adrenaline pumping into your body and just narrowing that visual focus until you're wanting to beat on the walls or throw things or run away or scream until you burst a blood vessel in your eye. It stops that. And then I look at whoever I'm talking to and I say, I am sorry. I am feeling overwhelmed. I am not able to handle this right now. And for me, because of my story and my physical experience in life and the way that my body is wired, that's true for me, right? Like I am physically not capable of holding it all together and being present right now. So I'm going to go take some space and do what I need to do in order to do that, in order to be present. And a lot of times that means I go and I cry and I feel sad for myself or I journal or I go outside or I come down to my office and I work on work and take my mind off it or I go snuggle my chickens or whatever it is that brings me a little bit of joy and groundedness in life, in the moment, something I can find joy in. And again, I want to stress that this is a process, this breakup with my expectations. I have no expectation of how long that's going to be. It's just a daily, what can I do today 
to be more present in the moment, present with the people that I love, present with myself, and not feeling like I'm failing at everything around me. Every day I struggle, every day I fail. Just like when I first started this podcast and I said, y'all, I'm going to fail at putting shit out for you. And here we are. It's like four months in and we're on episode four. Maybe that's my pattern. One a month. Awesome. I let the expectation go, right? That's when I started this journey. I just didn't know it. Breaking up with your expectations looks a lot like having grace for yourself. Breaking up with your expectations looks like having more patience with yourself and with others. Having the understanding that no one is perfect. Why are we needing people to be perfect? What is it about perfection that we feel is going to make us feel safe or whole? good. Oh, there's one good. I have this amazing, amazing woman in my life. Her name is Isla. She is a fellow coach. I am currently going through her coaching well business school and it's been amazing and life transforming. And one day we had a whole day talking about what if you don't have to be good? What if you could be bad? What would that feel like? And I was not having a very good weekend that we, this is, we was like two days of this. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be bad. I'm going to turn off my camera because we're on zoom. And I'm going to just sit and not be the first person to raise my hand. I'm not going to put in all my input. I'm just going to sit here and be silent and listen because that feels bad to me. It feels like I'm not being like the A student that I always wanted to be. The expectation is to do better all the time. And I let that shit go. So this is my invitation to you guys. To break up with your expectations. Break up with the expectation that your teenager is going to be motivated to clean their room. They ain't never going to be motivated to clean their room. Unless they have like someone coming over that they don't want to see the mess. Right? That's the motivator. It's not because you want them to clean their room. You don't motivate your child in that manner. Break up with the expectation that you're going to be the best parent ever. That you're going to get an award for how well you raised your children. Break up with the expectation that you're never going to yell. Y'all, sometimes you need to yell. Here's a side story. Seventh grade, my humanities class, which was like a three period class of English history, social studies kind of thing was all mashed together. It was great. I don't know why we were talking about this, but our teacher asked us one day, is it ever okay to curse? And everyone else is like, no, those are bad words. You don't use curse words. And I raised my hand and I said, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it is okay. And my teacher looked at me and she was like, tell me more about that. And I said, if someone won't leave you alone and you've asked them multiple times to leave you alone, you can say, get the fuck away from me because they need to know it's serious and you mean business. And my teacher, I remember this, looked at me. And smiled and said, yeah, that's right. And everyone in the class was like, oh my God, she just said fuck. And she didn't get in trouble. 
and, and a, a side result of that is people didn't fuck with me. <laughs> Anywho, there's always a, a right place for something. There's always a time and a place for everything. Things are not always good and or bad. But it's our expectations that keep us stuck in those little places and don't allow us to grow in the moment and see what's going on right now. Because we're so stuck on, well, at the end of the day, I have to have all of this done and I have to get my uh, application in for being the best mom who didn't yell and was a cheerleader all day long. This is me inviting you, giving you permission to let that feeling go for five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, five hours, 10 days, however long you want to try it on. Nothing is inherently good. Nothing is inherently bad. And to let go of that expectation of what you're going to be, who you're going to look like, what your kids will be, what your kids will look like, what your husband or your wife, your partner, your lover, your cat, your dog, whatever it is. Check those expectations and see if they're serving you really serving you, like growing forward, being a better person, having a happier, more joy-filled life. You. Are they serving that? Or are they keeping you from that? Break up with those expectations. Get out of that toxic relationship and see what it feels like. To really, really, really feel free to live and be a person and have all of the emotions, ups and downs and sideways and upside downs and roller coaster rides. Try it out. See how it feels. Break up with them. Until next time, y'all. Peace. Peace.